shout out to ZCX99 who reminded me in a very kind comment that it's a good idea to tighten the incoming uh, voltage wires to the contactor and the ground screw to the cabinet as part of your preventative Welcome back to Kung Fu Maintenance where I show you how to make the most likely repairs you'll need to make in your lifetime. If you'd like to get the latest videos, subscribe and then hit the little bell icon right at the subscribe button and it'll notify you of, of any new videos when they're released for you. We had a few units where I realized I had used the wrong capacitors uh, because I researched what was the correct sizes. Now this one is, uh, I believe it's the ICP and I researched it and it takes a 35 slash 3. Now it's not written in the unit what size capacitor it takes and I think I used the wrong size on this one so I'm going to be making this correct today. I'm going to pull the disconnect here and just going through fixing up the things on my list that I uh, have researched and worked out. So there's the disconnect. Here's the cover. All right. Yeah. Double checking. Yeah, this was the ICP. And uh, I think I put a 45 on here, and uh, it actually takes takes a 35. So discharge the capacitor. Capacitor holds a charge in it even after the power is disconnected. Um, I, you know. I perhaps could have taken a listen to it. We can actually do that and I can really just charge it. Show you here. Go ahead and I'll push the contactor in. And that wasn't a very good listen, but it's running. Make sure the fan's spinning the right way. Like this. Okay. I'm going to re-pull the disconnect. actually didn't get a good start there. <laughs> it is working good, but it's just not, not the right one. Now the fan motor I've actually changed out. So um, the fan motor I changed it out with uses a 5 microfarad, uh, which is good because I don't have any units that actually take the 3 microfarad. This one takes a 35.3. I need to re-discharge the capacitor. Get the capacitor holds a charge in it even after the power is disconnected. So it's all discharged there. And this one's got common as the red and perm as the blue. And then we've got a hard start kit. And just for interest, we can measure this and see what it's at. I changed this maybe two months ago. A look here, common to Herm. Forty-five. It's still good. And common to fan. Of course, should still be good. It hasn't wasn't used at all for the fan side. Four point nine six. All right. So this just needs a thirty-five. So change that now. You know, again, just going through to work things out to make it make things proper. So here's the 45. And this is just simply one one lead to each side. And in the common. Same thing. And then the hard start kit. One lead to each side. I try to position things to be easy for the future to slip off and all. Um, I'm going to test this hard start kit. This one is actually labeled 43 to 52 microfarads. A lot of them don't tell you. But through testing, I found that the subcos are usually the SPP5s are around 50 microfarads. And then On some Mars ones that are like 120 on the microfarads. Oh, look at that. 
We got a bad hard start kit. Point one, point eight. Got a bad hard start kit. Let me pull that off. Change that out. So it's good. We're finding things that we need to make better. This paper is an insulator, so I'm kind of using that to keep it anything from touching the contactor. I'm gonna check this hard start kit now that I got it off. Fifty one point seven. So it actually tested fine. hold it for something else, I'll go ahead and change it to what I'm using elsewhere, the SEPCO F55. I just didn't like how I got a bad test earlier. I'm thinking maybe it's the, the wire connection lost a good connection somewhere. things out. So that looks good. This one's a little tricky to test it, but go ahead and do that now. Let's see how it sounds. Change this to the 35. Let the disconnect back in. And we gotta kind of reach through here. Alright, I'll reinsert that just as an insulator to keep it kind of going to right inside. This one's a 35.5. Make it easier for the next person. Just kind of peeking at this fan motor to see. I can see anywhere. It's kind of faded on the data plate. Yeah, it's a Fasco model D7909. That's my other one, so it's a five. So it's good. So I don't need a three. <laughs> None of my other units take a three microfarad, so kind of hate it when you have the oddball sizes because it just means you know if you want to be ready for anything you got to stock all different parts it's nice when when you can get everything to it to a um, uniform you know setup it's easier to stock parts you know? okay now I just got my cover to go back on gotta kind of set the wiring so that have our wheel go back on. So, good. Back in the mix, all corrected. Good, right? Um, 
<laughs> Got a no AC. On this ICP here, but I had a power failure earlier. Power went out for the whole area. Power is back on now. And I'm thinking it's probably related to that. It's probably the fuses. So we're going to pull the disconnect. It actually kicked on, so maybe there's a loose connection here. I'll check my fuses. That one is a little loose. So, we tighten this, and we should be all set. It actually kicked on for a brief second when I touched it. capacitors and everything. Still not going to spare me from everything. Then I mean, nothing's going to happen. Just a, little, a lot less is going to happen. It's a bad deal. Back in the mix. Nice and cold. Good to go. All right. Bye. Have another day. And once again, it's a good idea to tighten down all your incoming voltage wires to the contactor, as well as the ground screw to the cabinet. And one thing I would add to that is tightening down all your disconnect wires as well. You just have to take precautions as often there's incoming voltage live power. So you're going to want to use an insulated screwdriver, which is always a good idea, a good practice anyway, to you know only holding the insulated portion of your screwdriver and then tightening your connections. Uh, it's just much safer to use insulated tools. On my units this year, I'm winding up going back afterwards to retighten all of my connections assembly line style. Probably would have been easier to do this up front, but it's debatable. All right, 48th minute today. And yeah. A quick search on my YouTube channel of whatever your maintenance needs are, you should find a bunch of different material that will be helpful to your maintenance needs.